Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video here in the world of Explorer. Today we're going to be playing a fun one. We're going to be playing with Zenith Flare. For those of you who don't know, this is a cycling deck. And my buddy, Cobra Go Blue, a good friend of mine, is not a fan of cycling. He had to endure it in standard while I was happily, blissfully casting it in limited and killing all my opponents with it. That said, I did play it on the Commander Show one time, and, you know, whether or not it had anything to do with the fact that I knew it would annoy him is really up for your speculation, not for mine. I, I, don't, I don't have the answer for you. In any case, this is going to be playing cards like Improbable Alliance, it's going to be playing Dran Stingers, Sensors, Flourishing Foxes, because look at how cute this fox is, and then he's got a big friend across the, across the way from him. Uh, we also have an Ironcrag Pyromancer, one of the Royal Skyons, or Scions. I prefer Skyons because it makes everyone mad. Two tap, uh, two tap cycle lands because I want most of my lands to come into play untapped. And then out of the board, we have three red cap melees for the very aggressive red matchups. We have an Aether Gust for the same one as well as for green. Two Mystical Disputes in the sideboard as well as a third and two Malevolent Hermits for the control decks and just the blue decks in general for the disputes. This allows us to make sure we get our uh, Zenith Flares off, and that's huge. We also have two Soul Guide Lanterns and an Unlicensed Curse in the sideboard for the Graveyard matchups, and then two Settle the Wreckage. One thing to keep note, if you bring in Settle the Wreckage, it turns off Gigantha as your, as your companion. I have found that in the matchups where you bring this in, such as Mono Red and the extremely aggressive matchups, Gigantha is much less important. It is more important to just make sure you don't die, and spending three for uh, basically eight mana for a 5-5 five -five, is just kind of hard to do in those fast matchups. So I found that that's a totally fine trade-off. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I would really appreciate it if all of you subscribed if you haven't yet. Maybe leave a comment or a like. I know you've heard this a million times from a million people, but I'm still getting, still getting started, and I would really, really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. It just shows me that people are out there watching, I'm getting new people watching, and that's really important to me. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching, and let's Pioneer Explorer together. All right, let's do some cycling. I cannot keep this hand. It was just a little bit too high on everything we don't want it to be full of. This hand I will keep and probably just drop a Sacred Foundry. All right, so Black Red. That actually makes me think that Flourishing Fox on turn one here might be pretty good. So I'm going to play a Flourishing Fox. They're, very, they're po possibly going to kill it. But that's fine. I just want to get a feel for the waters. Because if they're a pure control deck and they're going to try to basically stop me from doing stuff, I'd like to get a thing out on turn one and force them to have answers to it. So let's attack for one and pass the turn. I'm assuming they just put a Doomscar into the Fortel world. But we're going to find out what they're up to. We're going to hold up Sensor. At the end of the turn, I expect we will... All right, I'm going to definitely censor this. Not for me, thank you. And then play a Hallowed Fountain. And then I'm just going to play Improbable Alliance. And I'm going to cycle a Gopher Blood. All right. This is going to make this a 2-2, two -two, make ourselves a 1-1. One -one. I'm going to slay for 1. Oh, this deck is sweet already. Let's go. I'm looking forward to when they finally stabilize the board and then we kill them with something dumb. It's gonna be so great. All right, let's just attack for three, see what they've got going on. I'm assuming, I have a feeling I'm gonna see. All right. Well, you certainly don't wanna block my Flourishing Fox, my friend. I can tell you that much. Oh no, okay. That's probably fine. So what I am going to do then is probably just cycle this go for blood get an extra point of damage in make a one one and then probably cycle the valiant rescuer no i'm gonna hold off here actually they're gonna take three it's gonna go to their turn i'm going to play an untapped steam vents and the reason why is if it goes to the end of their turn i can cycle both of these to make a one one and that'll be really nice. All right, that's fine. Not much I could have done to stop that. And we knew it was coming at some point, but this makes them a little less likely to. All right, from here, I actually think I'm gonna hold off because I'd like to be able to cast this Dranit Stinger. 
So let's just untap. Ooh, another Flourishing Fox seems like it's going to be pretty good. So let's play that. Or maybe I could Dranith Stinger and then Cycle. Actually, yeah, let's do that. So let's play Dranith Stinger. They're very possibly going to counter this or kill this. Because this is actually going to prove to be a lot of damage over the course of the game, and I'm not sure they can handle that. Cling to Dust. All right. Gain your... Oh, you draw a card, you don't even gain life. Oh, buddy, you, uh, you're not 100% sure what this deck can do. From here, I am just going to cycle Valiant Rescuer to do a bunch of stuff. So we're going to deal one damage to him. Oh, they were beholding. They, you should always be holding, as they say with those diamond hands. But, all right. I really, the whole goal of this deck, by the way, guys, we want to one-shot something. We just want to one-shot somebody with a Zenith Flare. Hopefully from above 10 life, but if we have to one-shot him from below 10, that'll count. But we're just looking to just absolutely zoot our one of our opponents. All right, all right, all right. That's pretty good. I'm curious to see what they're going to do, though. I've got some damage coming their way. All right, this is all fine and dandy. And then from here, I'm probably just going to cast the Royal Scions. Drawing a sensor there was actually really nice because then I get to stop them from countering it if they have, like, an Absorb. So I will definitely censor this. No, thank you, Saw Coming. And then this will let me resolve that. And what I think I'm going to do is plus two the Dranich Stinger and then slay our opponent for a bunch of damage. And they can chump one of them and go very low on life total if they would like. That is fine, but they're at three. And we have one, two, three, four, five cards with cycling in our bin. Oh, they put the Dranith Singer away. Okay. I respect that. And then they're going to attack me down to four. Interesting. So my only fear is that I won't be able to easily resolve a Zenith Flare. So that's something we have to keep in mind here. So they're going to draw two with the Memory Deluge. We know how this goes. And then from here, what do we want to do? So at some point, we can always start looting with Improbable Alliance. Obviously, that's not ideal. What we really want is for them to... First off, they have to deal with the Scion or the token. Do they just die here? Did our opponent not fully understand? I'm just going to give this dude plus... Plus some damage. Yeah, okay. They definitely didn't seem to understand what was going on there. All right, let's go to game two. I'm going to bring in Mystical Disputes. I'm going to bring in Malevolent Hermits. I'm not going to bring in this Red Cat Melee. Other than that, I kind of don't need a, this. I don't think I need anything else. So what do we want to take out? Probable Alliance seems way too good. Dran the Stinger seems really good. I actually think I'm going to take out one of the healers, the Soul Guide Lantern... I think I want to take out a cast out as well as, hmm, there's lots of good cards here. I think a flourishing fox and then a, maybe just, this is a good question actually. Oh, I'm having trouble. Probably just a Dranith healer. All right, on the draw, I actually think I can keep this hand. We're just going to be able to see some more cards. We're on the draw, and yeah, see? Precisely what I'm talking about. I'm just going to play Inspiring Vantage and pass the turn. And this is one of the hands where I'm potentially going to cycle here at the end of the turn. But, ooh, if they don't do anything, maybe not. I'm just going to go to my turn then. I'm going to play this on the blue side. I'm going to play a Dranith Stinger. And pass the turn with the option to do some uh, do some damage to my opponent, start poking them down here. And if they kill it, that's fine. Portable hole is fine. I'm going to eventually want to resolve this Ironcrack Pyromancer because that's where the real danger is going to be for them. All right, at this point, I think I'm just going to cycle go for blood. I'd like to hit my land drops. So let's see what we get out of this. Okay, that's fine. Draw your card if you'd like. I'm still going to draw my card. 
Okay, I'm gonna cycle a Dranit Stinger and really hope to hit a land drop now. That's not good. We saw four cards and one land. All right, cycle go for blood now. We're starting to run out of time to get a land, okay. So that's a land. I'm gonna pay two life here, and I'm just gonna play a Valiant Rescuer. And this is going to prompt a response from them, whether it's an Absorb or something else. All right, Memory Deluge is fine. But if Valiant Rescuer is allowed to live, I'm going to just start making tons and tons of 1-1s. One -ones. And him himself, he's a 3-1. Like, he's a, he's a brawler for sure. So I'm hoping that they're able to... Oh my gosh, to fairy? That's pretty gross. Now I really, 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 really need to draw land. Because if I do... Oh, man. That's so brutal. I guess what I need to do here is cycle a Dranith Stinger. And then I guess cycle a Dranith Stinger. Okay. I knew that was coming, but cycle a cast out now. Oh my gosh, why is it so much work to draw my stinking lands? It's killing me, literally. Because now, how the heck am I supposed to kill this Teferi? I had one turn to drop an Iron Crag and kill it. But now it's just going to prove to be impossible, I think. We're going to see, though. We're going to try our best to kill this thing. But I'm not loving our position. But we're going to have to figure out what they're up to. Teferi, I just want to Pyromancer them so bad. Okay. That's not too bad, actually. If they want to make a 2-2, that's fine by me. What's going to really suck, though, is if they have a counter spell for my Iron Greg Pyromancer. If they do, well, seems good. If they don't, I'm going to cycle a Valiant Rescuer and then kill their Teferi. Goodbye. Pass the turn to you. Hopefully they don't have a Void Rend. But I would be surprised if they didn't of some kind. They're targeting it already. Okay. I'm actually already starting to think a second Pyromancer is going to be good in this deck. Maybe even go up to three. Not 100% sure. This was a deck I just kind of threw together. Ooh, Grody. I guess. That wasn't that amazing. It was just annoying. All right, Valiant Rescuer. Let's play this. And then... I'm going to cycle a Sensor. Just to see what we can get here. I'd love another Cycler. Zenith Flare's good, but it kind of just completely hoses... This completely hoses our deck because we are losing out on, like, five or six potential um, damage from our Zenith Flare. I'm going to cast a Royal Scions. I'm going to loot once. I will get rid of a Hengegate Pathway. We don't need too many lands now. I'm going to pass the turn to them and see what they're up to. Hopefully they don't have too many Shadows Verdicts. Go blanks, eh? Gosh, that is brutal. I think I'm just going to get rid of both of these and exile my graveyard. I'm just going to hold on to the Zenith Flare on the off chance. This is what happens when you give a control deck a bunch of time, though. Okay, so they're fully prepared for Zenith Flare, then. All right. Fine, fine, fine. That's fine. I think Royal Sirens can take three here. They've used a lot of their resources to deal with some of my stuff. Because now what I'm going to do is plus one this. And then attack for five at the... Planeswalker. They really cannot block it efficiently. Ooh, buddy. That's not gonna do what you think it does. Bang. It's got first strike and trample. Those are two keywords that you do not want to have on that thing. So let's just play another 3-1. If they have a if they have a sweeper, they have a sweeper, right? Like, what can we do at this point? We're just scraping by here. But we have lots of damage out. Okay, perfect. Well that's fine. They've kind of had everything they've needed in the order that they needed it, and that's perfectly fine for us. We're happy with that. 
All right, I am going to loot with this. And if we don't see something really good, all right, let's just go to game three. There's no way we're getting out of this lock. So if they're swapping into just full graveyard removal, I'm gonna remove like two Zenith Flares. And I think I'm just gonna bring in Flourishing Fox back and another cast out. And I'm gonna bring in an Unlicensed Terse and take out, let's take out another healer. All right, perfect. Another hand that is kind of dangerous. I'm going to keep it though. I just don't think we can mulligan semi-functional hands. Like we're just gonna go Flourishing Fox this turn. Hopefully they can't kill it. They mulligan to six. Hopefully they don't have a way to kill it. And then we can at least cycle a cat, a Dranith Stinger and see what they are gonna do. Oh, they have just the Fatal Push, okay. Land, 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 land. All right, Flourishing Fox it is. Pass the turn to them. Do that, eh? All right, I'm just gonna cycle a Sacred Foundry. And interesting. I think I'm just going to cycle Go for Blood here. Oh, I can't believe it tapped my blue mana. What is wrong with this? Oh, the auto tapper is so dumb sometimes. I thought there was no world where they would tap. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Well, they've dealt with some of my threats so far. I am actually going to cycle a Dranith Stinger or a Healer here. I'd like to hit my land drop. Perfect. Now I can go Valiant Rescuer. And then I'm going to pay two life here and pass the turn to them. Hopefully they don't have another way to kill my creature. Narset, I'm going to Mystical Dispute it. Let's see if they have a way to respond. They do not. Perfect. Then I'm just going to go land Valiant Rescuer. Attack you for three. And then pass the turn. We're not in a terrible spot. Go blank. All right. Well, I'm going to respond by cycling Dranith Stinger. And then, hmm, I guess I'm going to cycle cast out. All right, get to take all that stuff away, that's fine. But now you got lots of damage coming at you. So I'm going to not play my land yet. No, I'm going to play it just to make sure I can guarantee I can cast this next turn if they try to remove my hand. But they're going to have to spend their turn probably wiping my board if they want to survive. If they have, like, Shadow's Verdict or something, that's annoying. But then I get to drop a Gigantha. I don't hate our position, though. It just depends on what's in their hand. They do have four cards in hand. They've already played a Doomscar. They've already played a Fatal Push. We counter their Narsa, and they played a Go Blank. So I'm not sure exactly how they can get out of this, but they have some options. All right, we did it. All right, here we are with the Cycling deck. I am going to keep this hand. It's pretty questionable because I don't have a red mana and I only have one land, but cycling decks tend to get out of these issues somewhat well, but we're going to find out how well we get out of this. So, yeah, you can go to our turn, but before you do that, we will cycle this to make sure we hit a land drop. Okay, we're going to cycle this to make sure we hit a land drop. Okay, we're going to pass the turn. No! <laughs> oh. oh, this is not as bad as some some matchups could be, but missing that land drop. Oh, no, I really... All right, we have to cycle here. No, I'm just going to pay two life. I'm going to cycle the stupid Valiant Rescuer. Man, come on. Where's my red man at? Werewolf Pack Leader, yup. This is going to become problematic pretty quick. Are they going to fight or something? Primal Might. So gross. Oh no, this is not going as planned. Alright. Let's just go to game number two, shall we? 
I feel sufficiently punished for that. All right. Well, say see you later to our friend Gigantha here. Gigantha, you suck. We don't want you anymore. And bring in that and this. And then we're going to take out a Soul Guide Lantern. And then we're going to take out one healer. And probably just a... I don't even know. Here's a good... That's a good question. Probably just a go for blood. All right. This is a fine hand in game two. It's a little land heavy. We don't have red mana, but beggars can't be choosers anymore. So let's just play this tapped and pass the turn. And then see what they've got. Lanor Elves? Okay, no Lanor Elves. And we got a red land. So things are starting to turn a little bit better for us. Let's just play a Valiant Rescuer. This puts the shields down with Sensor for one turn, but... Not much we could do to stop that here. Yeah, I don't love it, but what can you do? Ooh, that was probably a great draw. So I'm going to just play this on the... Ooh, the white... The blue side. And then pass the turn. Do we dare attack? You know what? Let's just attack. If they want to block, they can. Yeah, I didn't think so. But what's nice here is that that makes our Zenith Flare just three damage less. Ronus the Indomitable. No, thank you, Ronus. I appreciate you, but not not today. Ha-ha! And then you're going to attack me for three, I'm sure. And that's A-OK -okay by me, because I'm going to cycle a go for blood. And we are winning this race, for the most part. And that is enough from them. Okay. All right. This is weird. I will ship it as it is. All right, here we are in game number three. I'm going to keep this hand because we're on the draw this time, and I'm going to use that as my reasoning. And I'm going to regret it, I'm sure, here in just a second. What is up with my hand just being so land light? All right. Cycle the cast out, end of turn. I mean, we have three draws to hit a land. We have three draw, three draws to hit a land! Four draws to hit a land now. We had four draws. We're not going to talk about it. It didn't happen. They figured it out. They figured out how lands work in this game. game. I'm gonna cycle the stupid Dranath Stinger. It's gonna be great. We're gonna have a blast. And we're gonna keep drawing lands for our Zenith Flare, and then we're just gonna Zenith Flare them like four times. They're gonna die. Hmm. I'm angry. Let's do it again. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. If this isn't a land... Oh! I just need to hit lands now. Oh, gross. They're going to start gaining life. No. This is ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> Give me a land. Perfect. Give me a land. Okay! We did it! Past the stinking turn. Hopefully they can't kill me here. But you never know. Ow! I'm at four. Oh my god! Playing a stupid Valiant Rescuer... And cycling a stupid Dranith Stinger. And praying that I can hit a land drop. At least this gives me some stupid dudes to block with. I can't believe we lost this game. If I had drawn a land, we could have just Zenith flared them, gained 11. Zenith flared them, gained 11. And won this game immediately. This is stupid. 
All right, we are back with another game with the cycling deck. We are on the draw here. Are we ever gonna learn our lesson, guys? Well, maybe not. Maybe maybe at some point, but not today. We're gonna we're gonna not learn our lesson. Oh no, is this mono red? Maybe not the deck to be learning our lesson against. Yeah, that's a mono red card. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Oh, no. If this is how it's just gonna go every time, I don't even know what to think anymore. Alright, so they have Kumano based Kakazan out. They can do their stupid mono red stuff, it's fine. Oh, no creatures? Hey! We did it! Um, the question is I think I'm gonna play a Dranith healer here. Actually, no, I'm going to play a Flourishing Fox. The main reason thing I'm worried about is that they have burn for it, but there's not really much I can do to stop that. And if they happen to not, then that's fine. And if they burn this, at least they're not burning my face. So I guess there's that. Yeah, play with fire going to that instead of my face is probably A-OK -okay by me. I'm going to cycle a go for blood in response. I know it doesn't change anything about this dying, but... I'm trying to save my Dranith Healer for where it's more likely to survive. Yep, make your stupid 2-2, that's fine. What I really would like is to get to 4 mana and then Iron Crag Pyromancer and then cycle and kill, like, kill something. That'd be super good advantage because then they'd have to spend another card to kill it and that would be really good. So let's see what they end up doing. They're just gonna attack for 2. What else do they have? We got three cards in hand. Nothing, eh? So here I'm just gonna start cycling some stuff. I just, as always, for some reason, just cannot seem to hit my land drops in this deck. All right, maybe sometimes I can. Sometimes. Pass the turn. I feel like Zenith Flare is going to be very, 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 very good in this matchup. Very good in this matchup. Very good in the It's gonna be pretty good in this matchup. Play with fire. Mine own face? Oh my gosh. Look at this stinking goblin, bro. He looks like... Why does he look like he's got, like, some sort of paladin spell cast on him in World of Warcraft? This should be in the Dungeon Dragon. Also, he's got, like, a weird thing that he's gonna throw at me. Play your stinking Kumano face to Kakuzan. Whatever, dude. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna cycle his... Okay. You can chill out now, though. Relax. Attack me for two, down to 11. Hope you're having fun. Then I'm gonna cycle this. Draw a card, ooh, it's a land. It does come into play tapped, but I do get to play a Dranith healer and actually like play it. And while I can't cycle yet, if they kill it, that's one less burn spell to my face. If they don't, I'm gonna trade here and then put another card in my bin for Zenith Flare. And that is a okely dokely with me. All right. Four mana. Lightning Strike it. Oh, I'm happy with that. I am a okay with that. Even though, unfortunately. Oh, etchings of Kumano. Interesting. All right, here I'm just going to Dranith Healer. Actually, I'm going to play Iron Crag Pyromancer. I'm going to cycle the cast out and kill your etchings of Kumano. That is such a... Man, that actually... That ability is actually pretty good. That's funny. All right, see what else they got going on here. Play a land. One card in hand, though you could always animate Den of the Bugbear. Yep, that's fine. I'm going to block this right here. And then what I'm hoping to do is draw land. All right, so that did not happen. So then what else do I, what else would I like? Probably just play Dranith Healer. Yeah, I'm gonna play a Dranith Healer. I'm gonna gain a life. I'm gonna play a Flourishing Fox now. And then I'm going to cycle this 
putting a counter on Flourishing Fox, gaining a life with Dranith Healer, killing their etchings of Kumano. And from here, they have to have double burn to kill me, and that's going to be not super likely. They've cast a ton of burn. And I'm not really worried about that happening. Obviously, they could have it, but it would have to be double at least one three mana burn or three damage burn spell. And, you know, they're playing Wizard's Lightning, but that cost them a lot of mana. Oh, they just conceded. Maybe they were just worried about the Zenith Flare. They're never going to. Is anyone going to let a Zenith Flare them? It's ridiculous. Just let me do it. How many lands are we running again? Two, six, eight. Uh, 10, 17. We're, we're running 21 lands. Okay. I was like, are we running like 10 lands? And I didn't realize it. I've done that before, like once in my life. And it's a, it was pretty embarrassing. So I'm like, am I just doing this again right now? But no. No, we're not. Instead, I'm going to have to kill Gigantha off. Sorry, Gigantha. I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. There's just no way I can do it, right? There's just... There's just no way I can keep a hand like this. It would be insane to keep this hand. Maybe I am crazy. <laughs> this, honestly, we're just gonna make one lander's work today. We're just gonna do it. Alright, I was kind of joking, game. I was kind of joking, game. Please... Please? Uh, I know these are terrible keeps, but I'm not a coward. That's the important thing to know about me, is I'm not a coward. Don't tell anybody, because then they'll fight me and then I'll run away, but... How dare you? That is the rudest thing I've ever seen. Oh, I'm gonna play a Gitu Lava Runner, too. Yeah. Okay, nice. That's kind of cool. All right, I am going to... What do I want to do here? I don't really want to play the Dranith Healer here. Interesting. I think I'm just going to pay two life here, pass the turn, and see if I want to censor something or maybe just double cycle. I know we're going to take some damage here. But I'm hoping that their hand's not great. Like, their land situation can't be great. I saw them... I've noticed they played only Ramanop Ruins thus far. So my opinion... My hope is that they're not actually in the greatest situation mana-wise. Okay. But that's fine. They're still hurting themselves every time they do this. Okay. Scry to the top. Anything else they want to do. They're going to attack me for five... That's a lot of damage. I don't know if you guys knew that. And then... Anything else? Nothing? Light up the stage. Alright. I am going to counter that. I really do not want them to get more resources here. Now I really want to draw land. That's a land. And then just play an Iron Crack Pyromancer and pray they can't kill it, I guess. That's really our only hope here. Alright, pass the turn to them. Pray they can't kill it. If we can untap with an Iron Greg Pyromancer, I don't hate our position. I actually think I'm not going to block. Ugh, that's bad. That forces me to block here. So I guess I might as well block this. Because if I block the two twos, I still die to any two mana uh, kill spell. But if I block the 3-3, three, three, I still die to 2 mana kill spell, or 2 damage kill spells, and at least I don't die. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Alright, well, let's go to game 3. Hopefully, I can draw a hand that is functional? Is that, is that too much to ask? It feels like it is, actually. It actually feels like I'm asking too much. And I'm so sorry for doing so. I actually think Royal Science is going to be is pretty bad in this matchup right now. I almost want to mulligan it because it doesn't have one land, but I think I'll be fine. I will just play a tapped Hollow Fountain here. I'm not going to play the Flourishing Box into their plentiful two damage burn spells. I'd rather force them to have a three damage burn spell for it. But let's just see what they've got going on. I actually don't mind this hand against what they're trying to do. I don't want to see a Kamado Face Kakazan, but yeah, that's fine. 
I'm going to play Inspiring Presence and then cast a Flourishing Fox and pass the turn to them, hoping that they can't kill it, though obviously it's quite possible that they do. But if they don't, then we get to do some stuff, I guess. I mean, we've got Red Cap Melee, which will be nice. Yeah, Lightning Strike. Um... I'm still going to cycle a cast out, at least. I know I can't. This guy's going to die no matter what, but that's fine. See you, nerd. I'll take one. And then I might just play this other Flourishing Fox. Ooh. No, I'm going to play Valiant Rescuer. And then play this. And then likely just cycle the Flourishing Fox now. But let's see what they're up to, because I might want to red get melee or something instead. We're going to find out. They have their three mana now. This deck actually functions pretty decent when it uh, plays its cards. That's crazy. That's crazy to think about here. That's my biggest recommendation. Okay. You guys need to chill on the burn spells, dude. Just relax. We're just vibing here. Why you got to be the one not vibing? That's okay, though. I respect the not vibe. All right, so they're going to attack for two. I'm going to take it. My life total is sitting nice and pretty right now. I'm going to keep this sensor up in case they want to, like, Chandra dress to kill me or something. Oh, that makes me want to play it. You know what? I'm not a coward. As we've seen with my keeps, and as I've said before, I am no coward. I've never been a coward. Don't ask anyone. All right, so now they've got five mana, five lands in hand. They have to spend double spell to kill Iron Crack Pyromancer, and we are in no way, shape, or form required to block with it here. Sentinel Totem, when I was Battlefield Scry 1. Oh, okay. That's, uh, that's kind of annoying. I've not seen this before. But that makes Zenith Flare a little more awkward. Yeah, I'm not blocking. You can't trick me into blocking here, friend. Get wrecked, nerd. So the question is, when do we eventually cast the Zenith Flare? I'm going to go like... Oh, wait, this costs a blue to cycle. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. Hopefully we draw a blue land here. But even if we don't, at least we get to bonk the Gitu Lava Runner. Okay, I guess I did ask for a blue mana at the end of the day. That's my bad. Pass the turn to them. See what they got going on. I'm gonna attack for one. I'm not. I ain't no. I ain't no weakling. Get him for one. Bonk. Pass the turn. So here's the question then. What's in their hand? Because they have three cards and they have not played many kill spells. Risk factor. Oh, I'm taking four damage. I'm not letting you draw a bunch of cards right now. Not a chance. If they want to untap and cast it again, that's a great question. I actually am not sure what I'm going to do if they just recast it. I really don't want them to draw cards, but actually I think I'm going to let them draw cards this turn because we have two red cap melees. That'll be nice. And I don't want to go too low. Yeah. That's pretty good. Now, are they going to recast it at a later turn? Probably. But what's left in their hand? Light up the stage. I don't like that. And then a play with fire and a Gitu. Play with play the Gitu Lava Runner or something. Let me spend my mana semi-efficiently for once. You bastard. In any case, I still don't hate our position. Yeah, that's fine. Now I, I'm getting a little bit nervous, though. I'm probably going to cast the Zenith Flare here. And the reason why is I just need to get the Sentinel Totem out of the way. And get it ready for potential future Zenith Flares. Because there's nothing I can do to play around it, so I might as well play it into it. You know? If you're gonna... If you're gonna be playing that card, I gotta somehow survive it, so... All right here. They're just gonna... I mean, you have to sack it here. I don't know what they're thinking about. Wow, I can't believe the Mono Red deck has Sentinel Totems in their bin, in their sideboard. What is this? All right. 
At least this forced their risk factor out of their uh, out of their graveyard, which is super nice. I wonder if that's what they were thinking about. It's a bit of a non-bow. All right, play your Gitu Lava Runner. This is fine and dandy. And actually, we're now in a pretty medium position, especially if we can draw a cycling card here. If we can rip off like two cycles next turn and gain two life with this Tranithu. Oh, come on. The question is, is he gonna minus it? No, he's not. That's so messed up. All right, well, here's the question. I think we're just gonna cycle this. I'm gonna bonk that for three. I'm going to red cap melee this. And then I'm going to go to combat and attack Tabalt for one and pass the turn and see what they've got for me. There's some stuff they could have. Ramanon Bruins is good, but not too, too good. Uh, this turns into a red creature. Okay, so that's nice. They're not going to attack. I really like that. End of the turn, I'm just going to cycle Adrana Healer. And hopefully draw a Cycler. Nope, that's fine. All right, so from here, we're just going to go ahead and I think just attack to Balt down. They might try to like animate their thing in response and that'd be awesome, but that's not super likely to happen. Please do though, that'd be great. Nope, okay. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. We got lots of options, though. We have a sensor, we have a red cap melee, we could always... Um... Yeah, that seems good. Alright. What else you got? Hopefully they don't have another burn spell. I don't want to be forced to use Zenith Flare here if I don't have to. Though I guess if they have a burn spell, I'm just going to Aether Gust it. Yeah, that's probably going to be the right thing. If they... Aether, if they animate Den of the Bugbear, I'm definitely going to Aether Gust that. That would be probably the best thing for me if they do that. Okay, this is great. And then when they go to attacks, I am going to Aether Gust or Den of the Bugbear. Whoo, that feels good. That's nice, because now they have to skip their draw step. If they want to get Den of the Bugbear back, they have to skip two turns to do it, because they draw it, and then it comes into play tapped. All right, we're going to go to the end of the turn, and now we just really want to draw one mana cycler to make our Xena Flare strong. Oh, yes! Oh, we're going to do it? Are we going to get this match? Get wrecked, nerd. There's no way. Let's Xena Flare him for five! I'm gonna hold off right away. No, I'm not gonna do it right away. I'm going to see if they give me a reason to. Because otherwise, we don't need to. We can hold off. I guess the, yeah. So what else do they have? What you got for us, opponent? I guess there was a reason to potentially Zenith Flare there, because if they drew exactly two double two mana burn spells that deal three, I actually do die. But it would have to be strictly double Lightning Bolt or Lightning Surge Strike, and they have. I'm going to let this resolve. No, I'm just going to cast this here. Zenith Flare you for five. Gain a bunch of life. Then, what else is this gonna do? Yep, they scribed one. We're at six. And things are looking pretty good now. I mean, we're still not out of the woods yet, technically. They could have just the perfect cards in hand to survive. But I'm liking our position, that's for sure. 
because now I get to go ahead and play Valiant Rescuer from Down Under, and then attack them for one. And then I'm definitely going to cycle this here, because then I get to make a 1-1 one -one and deal them three damage. Bonk. And then I'm going to play the Odawara. And the reason why is if they somehow have the most insane thing that kills me, I can go Dranith Stinger into hopefully Dranith Stinger or some other one spell and hit him for the last three. So let's go. All right, let's do some cycling. We're going to keep this in. It's got more than one land, so it's probably a bad hand. But that's fine. We're just going to play a tap steam vents and pass the turn and see what else they're up to. So they're playing in Dotha Triumph. So maybe this is the Emergent Ultimatum deck. Kiata Font of Hope, eh? All right. I don't like that at all, to be honest. I'm just going to play a Dranid Stinger and pass the turn. What is this? Some kind of three color angels deck that's splashing black? Interesting. Yeah, you can play Angel. Righteous Valkyrie, that's not good. They're already kind of off to the races, but... We're just gonna go... Cycle Adranith Healer. We're kind of all in on just... Absolutely slapping them around with some Cycle cards. And Zenith Flares. So let's just hope we can do just that then, right? Um, Play this here. Cycle Flourishing Fox. And then pass the turn. I mean, we're just hoping they don't have enough life gain to survive this. We're hoping they miss out on life gain for just a, just a turn or two. Obviously, that's super unlikely with the Righteous Valkyrie out. Yeah, that's, that's going to make this impossible. All right. Well, let's start by cycling a go for blood. And then adding in a Valiant Rescuer cycle. Ooh, Iron Crack Pyromancer actually is interesting. Play a tap Sacred Foundry and pass the turn. Problem is I'm now taking an absolute ton of damage in the air. What? What? What is this? Alright. Well, they got me. Is there anything we can do out of the sideboard? It feels like this matchup is very difficult for us because we have mostly just ways to deal with other things. I guess Settle the Wreckage is our best bet. Soul Guide Lantern comes out and probably a go for blood. All right, this hand is questionable, but I think I'm going to keep it. We're just going to cycle a and Stinger here. See what we see. All right, so the wreckage actually is not terrible. Pass the turn to them, see what they're up to. Watery Grave, what is this deck? I'm quite intrigued by it. I'm going to cycle a go for blood now. I'm really just looking to hit blue land. There we go. I'm just going to pay two life and pass the turn. Potentially cycling a cast out here, depending on what they do. But what I really want to do is just make sure I can censor something. All right, cycle the cast out. And then untap. Ooh, Mystical Dispute might be pretty good here. And then from here, man, I actually want to get a creature out. Maybe I need to take a turn off of holding up Sensor and just get out a Mystical Dispute so I can start attacking them. Hopefully Infernal Grasp. Yeah, that's fine. They're going to lose two life to do it, so I'll take that. Hopefully they play a blue spell here and I can Mystical Dispute it. It's probably the easiest Mystical Dispute of my life if that's what they do. Ooh, that's a Mystical Dispute right there. Perfect, 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 perfect. And then from here, I'm just going to go Rogrin Triumph and pass the turn. All right, this is getting interesting. And the fact that nothing's happened so far and they haven't just mounted the most insane board state of all time against us. Shalai, Voice of Plenty, shall get censored. Okay, well, 
Still so far so good, I guess. I'm just gonna cast cycle a cast out now. Draw land. Ooh, improbable alliance is perfect because now we can go and then go land here and cast royal skyons. And then I'm gonna plus one here and I'm most likely going to discard whatever I draw because I need this settle the wreckage. And this is gonna make a one one and pass the turn. All right. How quickly can they draw four when you deal equal to the number of cards in your hand? So the ultimate on this isn't bad. Looks like they have a way to kill it, though, if they're targeting it, or maybe they're just reading it. I'm not sure. Hopefully they don't have some sort of way to kill it. But you never know. They're playing Esper, some sort of Esper controlly type deck, so they might have a way, but that's fine. Look at this. Who is this dude? This dude looks sweet. I don't know who they're, like... Who their, uh, who their icon is, but they're pretty dope. Maybe it's... Oh, okay. I think I'd rather have Royal Scions. But we're gonna find out. So let's just draw a card. I'm gonna discard Sacred Foundry. I'm gonna play a Dranith Stinger. And the more threats I put out there, the better. I'm genuinely curious how many cycles are... I remember everyone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven right now. Righteous Valkyrie is fine. All right, so let's just plus one the Royal Scions now. Discard Dranith. Well, let's just discard Valiant Rescuer. And then plus, I uh, cycle this guy. Hit him for one. I'm gonna keep that as a card to cycle, to get rid of with the Royal Scions. And then what happens if they attack me here? I'm probably just gonna chump creature is whenever this creature okay that's interesting what what is this are they worried about my death touch that's amazing i'm just gonna chump here yep and then go ahead and go to my turn see what we draw flourishing fox eh that can't be too bad i'm gonna plus one one more time I'm going to probably just put away a Sacred Foundry. And then from here, I'm just going to play a Flourishing Fox. Is that what I want to do? No, I'm just going to attack for two. And then I think I'm just going to cast a Flourishing Fox, actually, instead of cycling it. Because I'd like to get some board presence going. And if they want to attack here, I'm definitely going to settle the wreckage. They could counter it. All right. Well, it keeps out the cards that are already in there, so it doesn't really do that much against me yet. Here, I'm definitely going to settle the wreckage. I just want to be able to ultimate this guy. Man, I can't imagine we're going to be able to win this game. Oh, they had a way to stop it. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I mean, we're still in a good spot, though. Watch this, we win. Bonk. Bonk. Yes! Let's go! Oh, oh that's so sick. Alright, alright. Maybe I need to bring in... Mystical Disputes? That seems so bad. That does seem just terrible. Maybe I bring in a Malevolent Hermit and bring out... A Dranith healer for a Mystical Dispute? Seems bad. You know what? Maybe I just need to... Do the bold move and bring in two Red Cat Melees, because we just need to kill their problem creatures more than anything. Alright, so here we are in Game 3. Our opponent mulliganed. I think I'm going to keep this hand, actually. If they start with a Ley Line, that's pretty sad, because our Zenith Flare becomes useless. But it doesn't look like they're going to because they're in their main phase. So here I'm just going to go Inspiring uh, Vantage, play a Flourishing Fox. And now the question is, do I want to play this Rawgrin Triumph? I actually don't know. It'll depend on if I draw land. If I draw another land, almost assuredly not. Pyre of Heroes? That's sweet. That's really sweet. All right, from here, I'm just going to go pay to life, play another Flourishing Fox... Cycle the Dranith Healer. See what we get. 
Cast that. Alright, attack for two and pass the turn. This is sweet. Though, if they have some sort of board wipe, I'm gonna cry. Please, no board wipe, Arena. Sparring Overseer is not a board wipe. I will consider that no board wipe. Alright, from here, I'm just gonna go land, cycle the Triome. Because I'd like to keep this out in, for the Pyre of Heroes. Swing for six. Which is a lot of damage. And we only have two for Zenith Flare right now, but if they have a way to kill my Flourishing Foxes, that ups the number. They only have three mana this turn. They can go get a four drop in, uh, and four drop Angel, but I get to kill it with Cast Out. So they get the ETBs. I'm curious what four drop they're gonna get though. Legion Angel, okay, that's pretty good. All right, here I'm just going to pay to life. Ooh, the question is... No, I think I'm just going to... Cast out? Man, the question... The problem is that if I can get a cycle card off the top... It's just so much more damage. I think I'm just gonna cycle this, actually. It's a little bit more of a... Oh, yeah. See, this is what we were hoping for. Now they don't even have an efficient block... I just don't think that making the other play was really worth it. And then here, I'm just going to play a Malevolent Hermit. Slay for 10. They can chump if they'd like to. But otherwise, they're going to go to 3 and die to my Zenith Flare next turn. I cannot believe we pulled this out. This is so sick. I mean, obviously, they have a chance to win here, but... You never know. If they're going to Pyre of Heroes Legion Angel away... Oh, I guess they get the one that makes them mill for all the damage they take... That's funny. So... Prevent that much damage and mill twice that many cards. So this would mill them 24 cards. That's a lot of cards. But it's not quite enough. Let's just go ahead and attack, though. See what they do. I'm going to cycle a Raugrin Triome. And see what we hit. I'm definitely going to cycle this too now. Man, these flourishing foxes are doing some stuff right now. Mills what? 28 cards out of their deck? And then I'm just going to pay to life here. No, I'm not. I'm at 12. I'm going to hold off. Let's see what they've got. They have some options here. That's for sure. Linvala. So at the beginning of your combat on your turn, if you have a full party, choose target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Alright, I'm just gonna cast out here, right? Is that the play? They have one mana up. They can't do this at instant speed. They don't even have the mana to do it. I guess I could have had lethal last turn, but lethal's for chumps. You know what? I kind of want to just mill him out, though. I'm not a weakling. How are you going to survive this? You're going to mill so much. Yes! Go to your turn. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. I should have realized that they probably had a way around it. I respect that. And now I'm annoyed at myself, because I wanted to win cool, and they had cheeky ways around it. So now I have to cast this dude out. And hit the angel with it. If they have another, though, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. Okay, I played a little too fancy here. I might be feeling the effects now. So what does, guys... Yeah, oh, that's so sad. But maybe I can draw another cast out and get him? Alright, Inspiring Overseer's good. Gain a life and draw a card. Let's see what they got, though. Fire of Heroes is fine. What are they gonna get, though? Because I still think we can pretty easily win. Shall I... Oh. Give all your other dudes hexproof? Alright. 
Fine, fine. I'm just gonna cycle the Dranith Healer. Go looking for something. Okay, so that works, actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and fight the Shalai. Zenith Flare, the Angel. This deck was sweet, but we got there. Let's go. Oh, yes. So sick. Let's go. All right, what did we think of the deck? Well, in my opinion, it worked really great when we had more than one land every turn. Uh, every game in the games where you had more than one land, it was pretty awesome. I think Royal Scions was great. I think I would actually take out Soul Guide and Mystical Dispute of the Main for two more Iron Crack Pyromancers. I think the deck, the card was just so good. And I might drop down probably a, probably something here for another land, potentially one Iron Crack Pyromancer and a land. Not 100% sure, it would kind of depend. I'd have to test it, but out of the sideboard, we have uh, all this. I think I would take out... I don't know. I actually really think the sideboard was pretty great. I think overall this deck is pretty fun. I mean, we got to Xenia player for a bunch. We got to do all sorts of cool stuff. We got a little salty in the middle of it, but that's part of the game. Uh, for those of you who don't know, actually, I just want to say I'm going to uh, Command Fest Orlando. So if you're going, I'd love if you came up to me and said hi. I haven't really met too many fans. A couple of them have come into the store that I work at. But I've never really met that many fans, and I would love to get to know you guys. Maybe play some Commander over at the Command Fest, and maybe play some 60 card too. Who knows? In any case, thanks so much for watching, and we'll continue to Pioneer Explorer together in the next one. Bye now.